Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and I work at the Ann Arbor District Library and I wanted to thank you for watching AADL TV. I'm back with you again for another installment of Cartoon Drawing. I'm really excited to get started with you today. Um, but before we do, I wanted to remind you that if you like the videos on AADL TV, click like and that way we can spread the word for more people to watch. And if you want to make sure you catch all the videos on AADL TV, click subscribe. Okay, today we're going to get into some doodling. We're going to do some guided cartoon drawings. We're going to make some emoji self-portraits. And I'll also teach you how to make a mini zine. All right, remember last time we started by doodling with just some patterns. You might have remembered, um, I suggest that when you sit down to draw, you just start by doodling. Remember that with doodling there aren't any rules, but you'll need to have a few things. Remember, you'll need a pencil. Remember, you'll also need maybe some colors. It could be colored pencils. It could be some markers. And of course, you'll need to find some paper. All right, so instead of doing pattern doodling, I left off last time by talking about ways of doodling out of um, something that we use every day when we write. So take a look back here and take a look over here. These are some doodles that I made. Can you see what I made them out of? Yeah, you can see that probably this is a B. There's an H over here. Looks like an A. Not sure what this is, but let me take this down and then you can see really clearly what I'm talking about. I started doodling by just drawing letters. And then from there, I took a different color and I added some details. So why don't we try that right now, just to get started and warmed up. If you have two different colors, that's great. If you wanna just use one color, that's fine too. I'm gonna to use two. So I'm gonna start just by drawing some letters of the alphabet. Maybe I'll start by drawing my name, but I'll put the letters all over the page. So I'll start with an L and an O. Maybe I'll make a small letter R instead of a capital R. Maybe I'll do a capital E over here and I'll draw my small letter N down here. Okay, I've got my five letters of my first name. Maybe you have a longer name, so you want to make sure that if uh, it starts getting crowded on your pa paper that you take another piece of paper and write the rest of your name because you're going to want some space in between your letters. Again, we're doodling and we don't really know exactly what will happen. Okay, so what I suggest if you're stuck, if you look at a letter and you think, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to doodle out of this, is start by just drawing an eyeball or maybe some arms or legs. And they can be really simple eyeballs and arms and legs. For instance, for my L, I'm gonna start with just drawing an eyeball kind of close to where the two um, lines meet each other, right? And, um, all right, I already kind of see where I want to go. I'm going to draw some eyelashes on the eyeball, and I'm going to maybe draw a mouth, because that that's sort of looking like a mouth down here already to me. I'm going to draw some sharp teeth, and maybe I'll draw a horn at the top, and I'll finish with drawing sort of a letter D there. And look, I've got a nice doodle already. So, okay, take a, the next couple of minutes and just doodle. Finish up your uh, letters of your name. Fill them out with doodles. Let's do that. So I'm going to draw some simple legs. Because this E already looks like it's moving to me. Really, really simple legs, and I'm going to draw arms on it, too. Remember, we're just doodling. There's not really a right or wrong. All 
Okay. Maybe I'll draw a different kind of eyeball for this one. More of like a cat's eye or an alien eyeball. Draw some eyelashes. Maybe I'll put the mouth over here. And some legs. Does it need just two? No, it can have as many legs as you can fit. Remember, we're just doodling. Okay. Here's what I came up with. Do you see why it's important to have space around your letters? Did you run into a traffic jam in any place of your paper? Sometimes that happens. Okay, now that we're all warmed up, we're going to get into some guided cartoon drawing. If you're not finished doodling yet, that's okay. Remember, you can always hit pause. And when you're ready, you can press play again. Okay, so next, you're going to want to fold your paper Grab some paper and fold it what's called hamburger style, widthwise, like this. And you're going to want maybe a straight edge tool. This is my clear plastic triangle. Sometimes people like to use rulers and sometimes people don't really need to draw straight lines and that's okay too. So what you're going to draw is get um, maybe two or three pages of computer paper prepared with what are called panels. That's the area where we're going to be doing some drawing. I drew this one freehand without a clear plastic triangle, or I use the clear plastic triangle here to draw some straight edges here. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to cover most of the surface of your page. Okay. We're going to do two guided drawings, cartoons. The first one starts like this. You're going to draw two vertical, or excuse me, diagonal lines that start toward the bottom of your page, of your panel, and they go up toward the top, but they don't connect. You leave some space toward the point where they might connect into like the top of a triangle, say. Next, you're going to draw two curvy lines, one over here and another over here. Okay. Now we're going to draw more um, kind of uh, bumpy squiggles. They can be different sizes. In fact, it looks better if they're all different sizes, so don't make them too precise. All right, next, we're going to draw more of those bumps pointing this way. Have you figured out what we've drawn yet? Yeah, it's a volcano. So let's put our volcano in space somewhere, on land. Let's put it on an island. And let's draw a horizon line behind our volcano. That's starting to look really 3D. Okay? Maybe to add more suspense, we can add a few drops of lava bursting out of the volcano. And what would really be nice is, is if we added a sound effect. Now, I drew a volcano already, and I colored it in. Take a look. You'll notice that I also signed my name. You should get into the habit of doing that too whenever you make a doodle or a drawing. That way you can keep track of your work. This looks really nice and suspenseful, doesn't it? I added a lot of color and I even drew a fish down there um, reacting to the volcano exploding, but it's missing something. I think it would be great if we added a sound effect. That way, we've got a really nice kaboom. When someone looks at this page, there's no doubt in their mind that this is a exploding volcano and it's really loud. 
Okay, so I'm going to add some details to my volcano, and you should too. All right, you can probably see that I started by drawing this in pencil. Can you see? And then I went over back over in pen over the places that I really wanted to um, go, I wanted to draw. So you can do that too. Nice thing to do if you go this route is to have a nice big eraser handy. You don't have to. That way I can clear the pencil marks really quickly. Oops, smeared a little. And that'll be easier to draw. Now take a look at this first drawing I did with you. Do you see the differences between this drawing and this drawing? I'm going to add another detail right now. Instead of just one kind of a hoop and an arch, I drew more squiggly lines down here because I wanted to show that this is the ocean and the ocean isn't just perfectly still. Same with the horizon line. I'm going to just draw some waves so that people can tell that this volcano is on an island in the middle of the ocean. Okay, I added some good details to this drawing, and I hope you did too. You'll see if you look carefully at the base of the volcano on the island, I've got a guy running, he's probably really scared, and I've got some palm trees, and you see how tiny I drew them? That's because this volcano is huge! So that creates some scale. We know how big this volcano is. I also colored in with a colored pencil the letters and the blazing hot lava so that people know this is a hot, hot volcano. If you go back to my first drawing that I did with you, I did, I just added the letterings kaboom off to the side because I couldn't fit it at the top. But maybe I could if I drew really darkly. That's an idea. So if you want to overlap and draw, draw kaboom toward the top or fit it on the sides of your volcano, either way is really nice. Okay. Remember, if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video. Now we're going to do a new guided cartoon draw. So have another panel handy. Let's get to it. For this guided draw, we're going to start toward the top right of your panel, and we're going to draw a clockwise spiral. It's just a really short spiral, like this. And then it goes all the way to the bottom and un finishes off with another spiral like this. Now it's really important that you stuck close to the right side of your panel because we're going to need, to need this space and you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, we're going to draw now four parallel lines. We're going to start at the top of the spiral at the tippy top of your panel and we're going to draw that line kind of sticking out to the left. Now you're going to draw three other lines just like it down at the bottom of your top spiral, you're going to draw another line. At the top of your bottom spiral, you'll draw another. And at the bottom of your bottom spiral, you'll draw your fourth. Good. This is going to be kind of tight. I don't have a lot of space here, but you'll we'll be able to pull this off. We're going to draw two parentheses. One here and one connecting these two here. Good. Have you figured out what we're drawing yet? All right, this is important. You're going to start toward the center of this parallel line here, and you're going to aim to hit the center of this parallel line, okay? If you need to draw two little dots to help guide you, you can do that. Now you're going to draw a parenthesis pointing this way now. Good. Now you've probably figured out what we're drawing a scroll. We're going to, we're not done yet, we're going to add two more lines to make this look more three-dimensional. Toward the center of your first spiral you'll draw a line till, you, till it reaches this line and at the center of your bottom spiral you do the same thing. And now it's starting to look like a curvy scroll. Do you see that? Okay, how can we make it look even more three-dimensional? Any ideas? Let's add some shadow. We could add some shadow here where the paper is curling in on itself. You see how I made my shadow lines um, not completely straight but a little curvy just like it would be with the paper itself. Now if you wanted to go in maybe with a lighter um, color like a colored pencil it's not as dark 
That way we can show more shadow at the top and bottom of your scroll. Wow, it's starting to look really nice. Maybe a little bit of shading. Again, it's the curvy lines. Do you see how I drew those curvy lines? You could do the same thing. Now, this is a nice scroll, but it needs some details. Why don't you go um, think about what you'd like to add to your scroll? And maybe, just to inspire you, I can show you something that my friend Ward drew. He drew some letters, and he, he did this. It took him quite, I think, uh, a little while to do this. But you can see that he drew letters in an old time style. This is calligraphy and it's called Textura Gothic. Another way that people often uh, call these letters is um, black letter because it looks really thick and dark and black. Do you see that? Well, I was inspired by my friend Ward and so for my details, I drew a black letter, a word in black letter, law, and you can probably read that. Peasants must bow to the king when he visits, and feed him ice cream. So you might do that too, add some details of some kind, maybe you'll make a law of your own, or maybe you could draw some people off to the sides and the corners here reacting to the law. Do you think the peasants would be happy about this law? Probably not. Okay, this time I'm gonna do it one more time, but quickly. You can see I'm drawing in pencil, and you'll see why in just a minute. My drawing's done, but to make this scroll look more ancient, I'm going to give it some scraggly sides. Maybe it's broken in parts. Maybe there's even a hole on the page. Add more details to make it look more ancient. And this way, I just drew some lines, some zigzag lines to show that there's writing on it but we can't read it, it's too small. And there we are. We have two really nice cartoons here. One, a volcano with a nice sound effect, kaboom! And another, a scroll with some nice details. You notice that I added some dust here and here and here. And I even managed to fit somebody in the panel at the bottom just saying, whoa, an ancient scroll. So maybe you can do the same or something similar if you have the space. Nice job on your cartoons. Next, we're going to get into making some emoji self-portraits. But before we do, I'd like you to just grab another panel page and think about some emojis that already exist that you like a lot. Let's draw a few of them. So let's maybe start with four circles. Make them nice and big. And this could be whatever you want. These could be your favorite emojis. Um, let's, let's stick to faces first. So um, maybe an emoji that is really simple, of course, just the smiley face emoji. But there are, of course, a lot of different smiley emoji variations. Like there's the sad emoji. There's the... totally in love emoji. Maybe over here I'll just draw a maybe upset stomach emoji. I'm not really sure. But why don't you draw a few emoji of your own that you really, really like. After you've drawn a few emojis that you really like, let's flip over to a blank page and let's draw some emojis that don't exist but we wish did. Can you think of any? I really wish there was an emoji that was just like a, maybe a horned monster smiling. And I also wish that there was an emoji that looked like a, a knight. You know, like a knight with his shining armor. I'm not really sure that looks like it, but I'll have to keep practicing. Sometimes drawing something simply is harder to do than drawing something that's more complicated. Okay, so we've drawn some emojis. 
We've drawn them from memory, and we've also drawn some emojis that we wished existed. And maybe in the process of doing this, we learned also that sometimes drawing something that looks simple isn't an easy thing to do. That's going to be important to remember because we're going to try something kind of more difficult now, which is a emoji self-portrait. Okay, so we all know what a portrait is, right? A portrait is um, an image of a person usually, of just their head and their shoulders. This is a portrait, also a photograph, of Dr. Margaret Monroe, who is a librarian. Here's a photograph, a portrait style photograph of me. And you can see that it's got my head and it's got my shoulders in it and that's it. So we're going to try to take this complicated portrait and turn it into something simple, something like an emoji. Think we can do it? You're going to need a photograph of yourself or a mirror. All right, I've got this photograph and I'm ready to start drawing. So, okay, I'm, uh, I'm thinking about my head. I'm just going to draw a circle to start, maybe a couple of little C's and a backward C to show my ears. I'm just remember, I'm remembering my, what I really want to draw. I'm smiling big, so I'll draw myself with a big smile and I will, I've got a lot of spiky hair, but remember we're trying to make all of the complicated details of the original photograph simple. So maybe when I go in with a pen, I'll try to simplify this even more. Oops, I forgot my eyebrows. I'm just gonna draw a couple of quick lines for those bushy eyebrows of mine. And instead of drawing every single hair up there in my sketch, I'm gonna draw just a few. That makes it a little more simple still. Okay, so again, you're thinking about what makes your appearance unique and you're highlighting those details. Once you're satisfied with your emoji self-portrait, try drawing yourself with different emotions. Now I drew a few of myself already. You can see. I'm interested. Angry. Really angry. I'm looking sorry there. And over there I'm laughing really hard. So how did your self-portrait turn out? If it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, don't worry. They're hard to do and it takes a while to get started. So if you want, you could maybe practice on a pet in your home. Like Gracie here. Yeah. Say hi, Gracie. Yeah. So Gracie's a good dog, and you can see she has floppy ears, and she has big, dark eyes, and maybe um, I could draw her smiling. She usually is smiling with her tongue hanging. Okay, everyone, nice job on all the drawing and doodling you've done today so far. I hope you're still having fun. I'm going to leave you with one last lesson before we call it quits for today. And that is about how to make your own mini zine. All right. You just need a single sheet of paper and a pair of scissors. If you have one of these things, it's called a bone folder in your house. That'll be handy too, but it's definitely not necessary. All you need really are scissors and a piece of paper. I'm going to go really fast through the instructions, but pause the video as often as you need to. Okay, so to get started, you're going to need to fold your piece of paper hamburger style. Then you'll need to fold your paper hot dog style, that's lengthwise instead of widthwise. If you have a bone folder, you can use the bone folder to smooth the edges out, and if you don't, that's okay. You can use your finger like I'm doing. Now, open your paper back up fully, and now you're going to fold it so that 
there are windows pointing in to the center of the hamburger style fold. You should come up with a piece of paper that looks like this. All right, you have divided into eight different parts. So you've done that, right? You have eight different parts here. Okay, so now you're going to cut. You're gonna use your scissors. You're going to fold the paper back hamburger style. And you see where I've written cut right over here. Make sure you don't cut all the way. You're not going to want to cut your paper in two, but just cut along that cut line. That's along the fold, not where that's open. So not where it's open over here, but along that fold line. Okay, you've cut, open it up. And now you're going to push the edges out so that you create a plus sign, something like this. Okay, great. Once you've done that, you're going to need to fold all the way around and you've created a mini booklet. Now, some people like to add a little staple there. You can see I've done that. And you're ready to create a comic that has at least six pages, including a front cover and a back cover. I'm going to show you the comic that I made really quickly about ice cream, an ice cream dilemma. All right, congratulations. You've created your own mini comic book and it's yours to do what you will with. Maybe you'll use your emoji self-portrait and star in a mini comic book of your very own. Thanks so much for drawing with me today. I had a good time and I hope you did too. I wish you many, many days ahead of you of drawing and fun. See you next time.